Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Real United States. I'm your host, Paul Campbell, and behind the camera, as always, is our cinematographer and my wife, Beverly Campbell. Welcome to Lansing, Michigan. We're here in front of the State Capitol building in Lansing. Now, the Capitol building you hear, see here, very classic American architecture used in government buildings. And most of the capitals you'll see, there's also always some variants in them. But of course, very typical with the dome in the center, very typical stone structure. Uh, this particular structure built in the 1870s. Now, depending on which date you look at, it was either started in 1871 or 1872 or three. It was completed, I think, actually in 1873 in September. And has been in service as the seat of government for the state of Michigan ever since. Now, I don't know how governments are structured in different countries around the world. I'm sure there's some variance, but I'm also sure that it's relatively the same that there is a national government and then that that is divided into smaller and smaller units. Here in the United States, we have then a state government. We have 50 separate state governments. We have, of course, regional, um, territorial governments in the territories. There are 17 territories in the United States, like Puerto Rico, which has a territory government. The states are then, 49 of the states then are divided into counties. The exception being, of course, Louisiana, which is divided into what's called parishes, which operate very much like a county. And then each county is divided into a township. There are about 36 townships in a county on average. And then often inside of a township, then you'll have a municipal government. So here we're at the state level, the just below the national level. And I just wanted to bring you here and show you a little bit about our state capitol building. It's a beautiful fall day here in Michigan. And so we'd like to take you around, show you a little bit of it. I don't have a great deal to say about the building. It's, it's like many buildings you've probably seen on movies and television and in books. But this is a very, very in, you know, important part of life in any particular state to, to visit your state capital. And eventually we are going to get to the point where we can film in our national capital. We're hoping to do that in future episode. But for now, we wanted to take you around and show you here in Lansing at the Michigan State Capitol. Now they've done a beautiful job of maintaining the grounds. There's some huge, huge old trees here. There's a beautiful bronze statue here, which is lit from the back because of the fact the time of year, the sun's off to the south and the statue actually faces to the north. Now Bev's gonna, I'm sure, do her best to try and swing around. This is Austin Blair. Austin Blair, the war governor of Michigan, it says, 1861, 62, 63, 64. Gave the best years of his life to Michigan. And his fame is inseparably linked with the glorious achievements of her citizen soldiers. Erected by the people of Michigan under joint resolution of the legislature, approved May 8th, 1895. This is a larger than life, I think, probably just slightly, but solid bronze statue, one of the original leaders of our state. One of the things you'll see in a lot of these parks and public buildings and whatnot are these very ornate, large post lamps. They've gone, they always go to a lot of trouble with the lighting around central government and central cities that are capital cities. And I love these, these light posts. Now I'm a fairly good sized man and you can see that this thing, I, I'm dwarfed by it. It's, a, it's an aluminum structure, but it's, they're big, big lights that they've got here. The leaves are about halfway through their cycle of turning color for the fall. There's still some flowers in bloom. It hasn't gotten really cold yet. We're a little bit farther south in the state than where Beverly and I live, so they haven't had a killing frost here yet. And the squirrels are out preparing for the winter in force. That's another thing you'll notice in a lot of government facilities is these large yards seem to attract a lot of squirrels, and that's something I'll talk about in future episodes, but 
Yeah, there's some very gi gigantic squirrels around here. We're going to go up and we're going to take just a look at the front of the building, the Capitol building. Now, even though this is only a two hour drive from where Beverly and I live, we've been trying to get to do this episode for over a year. It just hasn't been in the schedule. You'll see that this is a four story structure, but it has to house all the members of the state Senate and the state House of Representatives, which make up the legislature. Again, I'm sure there are variances in uh, how things are termed in different countries. We have a Congress at the federal level, federal level, and we have a legislature at the state level, but they are structured very much the same with a Senate and a House of Representatives. And of course, all the remaining parts of government at the state level are very similar too where we have a governor in place of a federal president, and we of course have a Supreme Court at the state level in all states as well. <laughs> Interestingly enough, it says entrance closed, but I guess I can understand that. The, uh, the building is closed across the board today because it's Saturday. I hope we can get a good enough shot here to see the elaborate nature of these huge, huge wooden doors. I mean, just immense amounts of ornate detail, even in the doors. I, I, I can't begin to imagine what those arch top custom made doors must have cost. And I know when talking about government and costs, it's kind of a sensitive issue for people, but since this is something we all share, we also share the expense. So it's relatively minor for each one of us, just those doors, but it is gorgeous. And again, these, these incredibly ornate lights on the front of the building Some of this stone, some of it cast concrete. And I don't really know how many members of the, there are in the Michigan legislature. I mean, I know how many members there are in Congress. There are 435 representatives and 100 senators for a total of 535 members of the Congress. But I don't know if that, how that relates at the state level. And I'm not certain that it's necessarily consistent across all the states. Obviously, states like Rhode Island have a smaller population base than bigger states with larger populations like California. So I'm not sure that the, represent, the number of representatives is the same throughout the states or if it's dictated by per capita numbers. All of our representatives have, or most of our representatives have offices, I believe, here, uh, besides conducting their collective business together. Many of the members of the legislature would have their offices in the Capitol building. Okay, just off to the side of the main entrance here, I see that we have a, a sign for the entrance for tours and information and a big brass plaque that actually says Capitol, entrance to Capitol here that goes in under the main porch. Unfortunately, we can't give you a tour of the inside of the building today because it's closed. That's just the way the schedule fell out. But perhaps at some future date, we'll be able to show you the inside of, of the Capitol building. If not, we'll show you a similar Capitol structure and hopefully you're picking up on some of these hints that I'm making. So you can see here, I mean, I suppose it's a little tough to see. They've done some uh, flagging here 
for uh, probably underground cables or something, but I wanted you to see was the lights that are a permanent part of the lawn out here. So this is all lit up at night with uh, up lights to illuminate the building. Again, purely just for aesthetics, just to make it look pretty at night. Now I had said earlier about most of the Capitol buildings throughout the United States, the various state Capitol buildings, all have kind of a similar look about them. They have this large dome structure in the middle and inside you that is actually an open dome often painted with a fresco of some type, elaborately decorated. And you'll notice here we're going to pan up and we're going to show you just how ornate the exterior of the dome here is here on the Michigan State Capitol building. Now we got around to the back side of the building, the lights at our back, this is where facing off to the north so that the sun's coming up from the south and you can see what an elaborate structure this is and from the inside on these domes they've gone to a lot of trouble the architects have to go ahead and place these small windows at strategic locations to show different things with the lighting during different times of year and different times of day and uh, this is no exception you'll see quite a large number of windows in this structure even though it's a dome that's, you know, 40 feet above everybody's head, just strictly for the aesthetics of how the light pours in through there. Okay, here also on the back side of the Capitol building is the parking lot for our representatives and our senators. And I guess everybody has an assigned parking place during their tenure in office. And so each of these parking places is numbered and has the title of the individual, their name, and their district. So I thought that was kind of interesting that there actually is a sign to parking here at the State Capitol building. I suppose it makes a certain amount of sense, the senior members of the legislature getting more opportune or better parking places which right now with a beautiful sunny day like this may not seem like a big deal because it's not a huge parking lot, but I assure you that in February when the session opens, the less you got to walk, the better you like it. <laughs> so I can see where that would be important in the dead of winter here in Michigan. The back of the Capitol building, obviously somewhat subdued from what the front of the building is, but still Now, one of, I'm sure somewhere is out there, some of, one of you is an, is an architect, and you're going to tell me about how I screwed up the name of these column caps. They're Doric or something. I have no idea. I suppose I could look that up. But again, this is a very typical style of government building here in the United States with these big round columns often in pairs like that. And you'll see the very same thing when we get to our nation's capital in Washington, D.C. in terms of the architecture of the front of the Capitol building with these large columns that hold up either a portico like this or a veranda, balcony, whatever you care to call it, as we saw in the front of the building. So I can imagine what some of you are thinking, hey Paul, what the hell, you drove all this way just to show us the outside of a big gray building. Well, unfortunately that's the way things fall out sometimes. Uh, we weren't able to get on the schedule where we could be here during operating hours, but I did want to get this done before the snow starts to fly. And so, while I would like to very much to have shown you the inside of the building, I did want to at least bring you here and show you what the state capitol building looks like here in the state of Michigan. So we hope you've enjoyed this episode here at the Michigan State Capitol building in Lansing, Michigan. We hope you'll pick subscribe and join us if you haven't already. If you've got questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. I love hearing from all of you. I try to get back to all of you as soon as I possibly can. And as always, thank you for watching.